Did Jesus do yoga? Well, I'm actually in the middle of a run right now. Personal fitness is a big thing for a lot of Christians, and yoga is a great way to get in great shape. So Jesus does a lot of things that we see inside of scripture that might actually you know, resonate with some of the breathing techniques and other stuff that's involved in yoga. So I wanna jump into that in this video. But we're gonna look at why you should or should not do yoga and what you should do. So I tell you what, before we go jump into the next spot, I wanna introduce you to a little friend of mine and her name is the Indian River. Let's head to the church and then let's jump to the dojo. This is our Parkway location. This is East Coast Christian Center. This is one church in many locations. And I tell you what, um, I'm, I'm stoked. I just wanna give my, my church a shout out real quick. Let's just check this out. Whoa, here we go. Here we go, look at that, look at that, look at that. Come on. Well, I'll tell you what, we're gonna talk about yoga. We're gonna talk about yoga. Inside of yoga is a lot of religious and spiritual practices, 330 million gods that they contort their body to worship, and all of that is demonic. They're not real gods. They're just demon, demonic forces. So as Christians, can yoga and can Christianity coincide? The answer is actually no, we cannot coincide. But don't stop watching the video yet because there's a lot more you need to know, especially if you're like me, as you can tell, by my amazing dad bod physique. I love fitness though, and I love to try and be healthy. So there's actually some key things you know as a Christian if you're gonna continue down this yoga path because believe it or not, it's gonna scare some people. It's not all bad, but we have to clear some terms up. Let me read something to you real quick, hold on. Don't go anywhere, boom, I'm back. So check this out, Exodus 24 through six. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven or above or on the earth beneath it or in the waters below, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and they keep my commandments. God is really clear right here. He's saying, look, don't worship idols and there's a lot of idol worship going on in yoga but we need to clear some things up because actually stretching is really good for you and the strength training inside of stretching is incredibly good for you as a matter of fact in this video i'm gonna break it down to three key components one is breathing two is meditation and three is movement we're gonna look at those and also we're gonna look at the word worship so why don't we take a look at the word worship let's jump to the dojo come on so when the bible says the word to not to worship other gods i want to take a moment and break down that word worship which in greek is proskuneo that's the word that is used that means to bow to kiss to serve to worship it's an extension of a form of love and affection towards towards something or someone is what is what it's saying so if you remove that from what you're doing in your physicality. I know even the word bow is used. You might say, oh, well, it says don't bow. You're bowing in yoga. Well, wait a second. That's not what the Bible is saying, and that's not what the Greek word is saying. That's not what the word that is used is actually leading us towards. So if you are going through the motion, if you're going through warrior one, or you're going through a lunge, and you're not worshiping something, if you're not giving honor or reverence to something, but instead your heart set is actually to gain a physical benefit, whether stretching or good cardiovascular, you know, benefits. That's what, those are two totally different things. So you have to remember that. So saying that someone that is physically doing a yoga pose is worshiping one of their 330 million gods is the same as saying then that somebody that sits inside a church is a Christian. Just because you have a physicality of an action doesn't mean you're actually extending worship. Of the big three components, let's jump into number one, and I believe that is breathing, breath. I believe it's pronounced pranayama inside of inside of the yoga language in Hindu in India where they practice this. I, like I said, I don't do yoga, so I don't know this, but prana is a word for breath, and and it ties in close to like chi or tai chi and they, they correlate with a life force. So you have to be careful when doing yoga as a Christian that you're not doing that stuff. When you breathe in and breathe out, what you're doing is oxidizing your blood. This is scientific. It has nothing to do with some God-worshipping life force. Matter of fact, it's not even your breath that gave you life. The Bible tells us very clearly in Genesis that God's breath is what gave us life. So it is not our breath that gives us life, nor does it harness a life force. 
You should not be focusing on somehow generating this chi type energy or anything like that. That once again is a lie and it is an open doorway for the demonic elements to come in. Instead, with your breathing, you just know that you're helping your heart rate, you're oxidizing your blood, and you are getting healthier. But on no way are you building up some Dragon Ball Z power. You're not Obi Yu Kenobi using the force. There's none of that stuff. So this this chi, this prana, whatever it's called on the on, on their side of stuff, we separate ourselves from that. We we have no part of that. And if it keeps getting pushed hard on you, you might want to find another place where you do your workouts. What we do need to realize is when it does come to breathing, that in us, that as we breathe in, that we we actually have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. So as our body is getting calmer, we're, we're breathing out stress, we're focusing on God. And honestly, that'll lead me ne to the next part. We have breathing, which is important, but the other part of yoga that really hangs people up is the meditation part. So let's talk about that. Meditation, that's another area where people get hung up on with the word and the and the verbiage of it, of meditating on something. And once again, in the Bible, to meditate means to maul over, as, as if a cow would chew over grass, it would maul over it continually. So we're to meditate on the word of God. We are to maul over it. I even encourage people to let the word of God read you. But when you go to yoga classes and they start this meditation, here's the big con that you need to look out for, is that you are called to empty your mind. But as Christians, we are not called to empty our mind. We're called to renew our mind. When you start emptying your mind and you start wanting to just allow whatever is around to fill in your mind when it comes in, allow it to pass through as if it was like a river or like a flowingness, that's less that's less meditation and actually opening yourself up for the demonic elements. There's a lot of demonic stuff with yoga. That's why the environment you practice, that, that's why who you're with is so critical to whether or not you should be doing this or not. So once again, this meditation, you are not to empty your mind. You don't need a higher enlightenment. You don't need to be one with the universe. You don't need any of that stuff. You have the inward dwelling of the Holy Spirit. And what your mind is focused on is scripture. And you activate that scripture through prayer. And that's what Christian meditation looks like. And it's powerful. And prayer works. So there's another part of this I want to camp out on too before we wrap this video up. And we've talked about breathing. Now we've talked about meditation. I want to talk about the movements. All right, so the movements are really important. And there's really a, a trap here with this one too. Because like I've stated before, the movements can just be movements. And there, there's no, there's no worship to it. But with the 330 million gods that are worshipped within yoga, the movements, the the Physical acts are actually a way they do worship their gods. So if you went to India, you would see people doing yoga poses as forms of worship towards their idols. And as Christians, we absolutely never should be doing that. Actually, we're called to have our bodies as living sacrifices. Our bodies are our temples of the Holy Spirit, and they are not to be contorted in acts of honor or homage to a piece of wood or metal, okay? Because that's all those things are. They're not real gods. 330 million fake gods is what they have. I mean to offend nobody when I say that, but that is the truth. So as Christians, we don't do that. Know the physical reason why you're doing the exercise because that's what you're doing you are exercising so that's why it's dangerous to mix these movements with a religious or with a spiritual component okay when you go to your yoga classes that's why you have to watch what type of yoga that you do so <laughs> so for instance i believe it's called uh, bikram yoga some people call it hot yoga i call it booty cheeks yoga because really it's just like everybody gets down to like a g-string and just starts like stretching around all over the place and you're all super sweaty when it's done i don't do it obviously but that's what it is you want to be careful because who can't go into places like that just thinking everything's okay uh you have to watch out because one just the physicality of the exercise is that the type of environment and the movements you want to be in especially if you're a guy and you're trying to guard your heart um, and you're trying to watch what you you know you do you put before your eyes especially if you're a married man but the movements know why you're doing the exercises know what they they how they benefit you when i go i like to lift all right okay i like to, i like to pick up heavy objects repeatedly but i don't just abstractly do an exercise 
or know the benefits that it has for me. Same if you're gonna do this. Know the benefits it has for you and the reason for it. Let's talk. Let's actually take a look at some of those movements. We gotta clear the air that the poses inside of yoga are not solely isocentric to yoga. So for instance, mountain pose, you're just standing. Warrior one and warrior two, those are both just lunges, just one you pretend you're a part of the cast of Mulan. Corpse pose, you're just laying down. Seated forward pose, that's just a toe touch. Bounded ankle pose, that's just simply a butterfly stretch. You have plank, that's just a push up position. And then you have. All right, here's some do's and don'ts if you are gonna exercise to yoga and if you just wanna have some guardrails so you feel comfortable. One, we do not meditate and empty our minds. We do not chant. We do not practice the Kundalini awakenings. We do not sing the Kiritan songs. We do not, we do not om. We do not, like that goes with the chanting. We do not activate or try and open a third eye. We do not believe in astral projection. None of that stuff is a part of what any Christian should ever be doing in yoga. I'm even going to throw, we really don't want to be practicing yoga in places where there's um, Buddhist uh, relics all over the place where there's Hindu statues and idols all over the place. Now, I get it. You you might be like, that doesn't bother me or affect me. I I disagree. You know, if the Bible goes as far as to say bad company will corrupt good moral character, I also believe the environments and stuff could also still corrupt your spiritual walk. So I, I would say I would probably exit stage left if that was me or someone I love. Um, things we do, we do focus on Jesus. I do think we should be playing worship music. I do believe we declutter our mind. I do believe we activate prayer. I do believe we meditate on scripture. I do believe we open our hearts to receiving from the Holy Spirit in these moments. These are things you can do while doing the physical stretches that are found in yoga. Hey, I hope this video helped you out. Well, I'll tell you what, the yoga Yoga controversy inside Christianity can, can absolutely get tense. Another one that can get tense is talking politics. So to help you out with your political views, or at least being in conversations with people with, you know, some tough political views, I made a video here. I'm going to try and post it here or here, wherever it's going to come up at the end of this video. Check it out. It's going to help you being a Christian and talking politics and be able to save Thanksgiving dinner or relationships with coworkers and family and friends. So smash that subscribe button, hit that like. Man, I can't wait to catch up with you guys in the next video.